My creepy uncle and stepfather. I've been lurking this subreddit for a while, and a lot of your stories really resonate with me. Um, some backstory. When I was born, my mother decided she didn't want anything to do with me, so she sent me to my grandparents' house in Peru. That's where I grew up. The creepy uncle. When I was maybe five or six years old, I was obsessed with Sailor Moon. Every day, I would lay down on the couch, belly down, and watch a Sailor Moon kick butt. One day, however, something really weird happened. My uncle came in and laid on top of me. I didn't know what was going on, so I sort of ignored him, just watching the cartoon, until I felt something poking me. I went to sit up, but he held me down, and just as I was getting scared, my grandmother opened the door. My uncle got up really quickly and acted like nothing had happened. He never did it again, and I never mentioned it to my grandparents, because I didn't want to upset them. My stepfather. Now, this is a bit creepier in my opinion. My mother had moved me from Peru back to the States. I was maybe 9 or 10 years old, or around the 5th grade. Anyways, everything was fine for a while, until my mother began to physically abuse me. That's where my stepfather comes in. He would come into my room and tell me he would protect me from my mom if I did things for him. These things made me really uncomfortable, but at first it was okay. However, as time passed, he would often come up behind me while I was brushing my teeth and grind up against me, or he would come in at night and put his thing in my hand. I remember I threatened to tell my mom, but he just laughed because he knew I was terrified of her. So things went on like this until it was maybe midnight and he comes in telling me, oh, it won't hurt, it'll feel good and I'm terrified. I can feel him taking off my pants and then there was this pain. I had no idea what was going on, only that he was thrusting. I look over at the door and what do I see? My mom standing there watching. Eventually, I broke down and told a guidance counselor and I was taken away. I went to criminal court, but it was my word against two adults and... So he got off the hook. So he's out there right now, roaming free. I'm sorry if this isn't the right place for the story. Or if it's not creepy enough. I have no cousin Danny. I was pretty much raised by my grandmother, since my mom and dad were not exactly great at the parent thing. My grand took great care of me. She couldn't afford a house in the better parts of the city, but she did everything for me. About the same time as I was done with my education and ready to start my own adult life, she started to show signs of Alzheimer's. I was devastated and refused to let her go to a nursing home, so instead I moved back in with her, determined to care for her as, as she cared for me for all those years. I would leave her during my work hours but be home for lunch and in between, the next door lady would just check in on her. My main problem was that she forgot to eat and someone needed to tell her what to do and when to do it. She was the sweetest old lady though. One day, I came home on my lunch break and heard my grand talk to someone in the kitchen. Can't you find it, dear? I rushed into the kitchen and saw a man going through her purse. When he heard me come in, he just stopped and turned around, a wild look in his eyes. Who the hell are you, I growled, trying to sound intimidating, which is a hard thing to do when you're a petite woman who had just encountered a possible burglar. It's your cousin Danny, dear. He came for the money, you see, my gran explained, as cheerful as ever. Gran, I don't have cousins. I don't know this man, I replied, not taking my eyes off of him. Could he be on drugs? I couldn't see any weapons on him. And he was the lean, slim kind. Maybe he wouldn't risk fighting me. For all he knew, I could be a martial arts expert. He came for the money, darling. He is buying us a new camper. Grant continued and started to tell the old story of how she once took me in a holiday in a camper when I was six and how we had the greatest time together. Get out! Right now, I said, as calmly as possible to the man, who was starting to look rather uncertain about how to deal with the situation. Follow me out and I'll give you the cash I got, but you and I are walking out of here right now. To my utter surprise, he agreed with no further argument and walked out in front of me. I slammed the door shut the moment he was over the threshold and returned to my gran, who was now happily recalling our trip to Disney on my 10th birthday. I wasn't surprised to discover that all her meds were gone and her wedding ring missing from its place on a hook in the bathroom. After this incident, I realized I couldn't give my gran the care she needed and deserved on my own, and I got her a place in a nursing home close by. I visited very often and the nurses there all loved her. She really was a very wonderful lady, even in her later stages. She sometimes talked about cousin Danny and his camper, and I played along with it. But personally, I prefer no further interaction with cousin Danny.
Stories of my mom's drug dealers. My mom did a lot of drugs when I was young. She was always pretty open about it, so drug use was a pretty normalized thing to my brain since a young age. Part of the normalization occurred because my mom often took me with her on her drug runs. The dealers were always nice to me. One guy was named DJ or PJ or something like that, and he had cool black light paintings and candle wax sculptures. Another guy was Don, and he had the biggest, bushiest beard I'd ever seen. Reminded me a lot of a brunette Santa Claus trucker. And then there was Barbara and Sparky. Like the others, Barbara and Sparky were nice to me for the most part. Barbara was at least. Sparky usually just sat in the dark living room watching movies on Cinemax and HBO. They were at least 20 years older than my mom, probably 30 years older. Whenever we went over, the routine was the same. My mom and Barbara would leave me in a room, and they would go and get high. I was about 7 years old at the time, so I was too naive to understand this was wrong, but the room they left me in had a TV, an NES, and at least 50 or so games for it, so I was in heaven. I played well-known games like Super Mario Bros. 3 and Bubble Bubble, as well as bizarre games forgotten by history like Monster Party and Kickle Cubicle. Regardless, I had hours of free time to explore the large NES library I'd ever seen. I was in on Cloud 9. Early on into our trips to Barbara and Sparky's, though, my mom told me not to be alone with Sparky. I asked why, and she hesitated. She ended up telling me he doesn't like kids, and I wasn't innocent enough to buy it for despite her squirreliness. Despite the warnings, I never noticed anything off about Sparky. Like I said earlier, he mostly just watched movies in the dark by himself. However, one night was a bit different. I was playing games as usual when the door opened. In the doorway was Sparky, holding a small glass of dark liquid, probably rum or whiskey. Not that I knew it at the time. I said hi, but he just stood in the doorway staring at me. It was uncomfortable, but I just discovered that they had the monsters in my pocket video game. So I turned back to it. I felt him staring at me for a few more moments before I turned around again. This time, he asked me what I was playing. I answered, and then we were back to silence and stares. He followed up by taking another swing of his drink in and inching behind me. He put his hand on my shoulder and gave it a squeeze. Not like he was trying to get my attention, but something more purposeful. I didn't know what to make of it at the time, but thankfully, I didn't have much of a chance. Almost as if summoned by Sparky touching me, my mom and Barbara appeared in the doorway, surprised and concerned that Sparky was in the room with me. They ushered him off, and the rest of the time at my mom's drug dealer's place was as normal as could be expected. I didn't know about pedophiles then, but now that I do, I wonder how close I came to being abused. On another visit to Barbara and Sparky's, I've been playing video games for longer than usual and got hungry. I went into the kitchen and found nobody. I looked around for any snacks on the counter, but only found a mirror with lines of white powder and a very short straw next to it. This was a strange sight to me as one, I had no idea what that powder was and two, I never saw mirrors that small and three, I definitely never saw straws that short. I stood there looking at it for a while, trying to make sense of it all. When my mom came in behind me, she seemed hurried and got a glass of ice water. She told me to stay away from the white powder and to go back to playing games. Then, as quickly as she entered, she left. I was still hungry, and she left so quickly that I wasn't able to ask her about food, so I followed her. She went to Barbara and Sparky's bedroom, where Barbara was lying in the bed. She looked like she was having a bad dream, but her eyes were wide open. Her head thrashed about and she was muttering. Sparf, we have to get ready. The Christmas man is coming. The Christmas man! It went like that for a few minutes. As a young child, I thought she was being funny, so I laughed about it. My mom just grimaced, gave Barbara the water, and told me we had to leave because Barbara wasn't feeling well. On the way home, I asked her about the Christmas man. I asked if it was Santa Claus, and if it was, why, why, why she was talking about him in the summertime. I don't remember what she told me, but she probably dodged the questions or spoon-fed me something an innocent child would believe. Eventually, my mom ended up breaking ties with Barbara and Sparky not too long after that. I, I, I never knew why, but I wasn't sad to never see them again. I was sad about never seeing the video games again, though. Creeper Father Returns So, this is being posted because as the title says, 
My creeper father has made a comeback. At least he attempted to do so. To his attempt, I was reminded of some of his creepy moments and decided to share some of them. Quick notes. Parents divorced when I was 7 years old. I am the oldest of 4 children. I am currently 28 years old. None of us have spoken to him in 6 to 7 years. He recently attempted contact, but none of us were willing to deal with him. I did post a year or two back about how his family tended to watch my siblings and I sleep when we visited. They did that for many years and to this day. We don't understand why. I also made a post about his mother attempting to kidnap me from school after the divorce. I intended to post more creepy family antics, but because I became busy with life. Now that we are all caught up to this information, let's get to the meat of all of this. So my father is, at the worst of times, a mentally unstable abuser, and at the best, a deadbeat dad. After the divorce, we saw him less, and because of this, and the court papers, to be honest, his abuse became less physical and more and more creepy. He would do things, like walk in on my siblings and I in the shower, or when we were changing, by picking the lock. Upon entering, say he had to ask us something. Usually it was something like what we wanted for dinner, or if we wanted to go, uh, go over and see our grandparents, stuff like that, you know? Things that easily could have been asked through a door or even waited till we were done. I have two younger sisters and one younger brother. We all grew up very close, and at our youngest ages, tended to change or shower together so no one was left alone with dad. As we grew up, we learned how to keep him out of the bathroom and our room as well. So we began other things, rubbing my younger brother's inner thigh when he was four years old and talking about how much he looked like our mother, slapping one of my younger sisters on the butt as she went out to accept an award at school when she was eight or nine years old. This stuff became pretty normal despite our visits being sporadic. When he would focus on making life hard for my mom, he would file with the court saying she was keeping us from seeing him when in actuality, he was never picking us up. When I was about 15 years old, we got a call from my father's stepdad, informing us that our father was missing. This was news to us at the time because we hadn't heard from him for three years. However, my grandpa claimed that dad talked about seeing us all the time. Two weeks go by since grandpa called, still no sign of dad. One day, mom picks all of us up early from school with the news that dad had, a, had been found. We weren't sure how to feel, of course, but that soon changed when mom began to drive to an aunt's house four hours away. We realized something was actually going on and asked what it was. Mom said it wasn't the cops who found dad. It was grandpa. He had been found half a mile away from where we were living. His car loaded with hunting equipment, though he didn't hunt and a picture of me and another of my mother. Both our faces were scratched out, and he had been muttering about how to kill us. Now, apparently Grandpa moved Dad in his car, took his hunting equipment, and then phoned Mom about it. Then Grandpa phoned the cops anonymously to go pick up the crazy man outside of Kmart. The cops magically found Dad outside of Kmart under severe mental duress, shouting about some someone having taken his hunting bow set and shotgun, Dad didn't have any of that registered, so they didn't know if he had it or if it was just all in his head. They take him in. They have no clue about Grandpa's involvement at all in this whole entire situation. Months later, he is released with a bunch of pills to keep him in check, to keep him sane. He never takes them. He is granted continued visitations with us. Spends the next few years seeing us even more sporadically, but still filing reports that my mother never lets him see us. Shows up at my brother's middle school when he is 14 years old, attempts to pull him out of class to take him to go see a prostitute. When brother refuses to go, daddy dearest decides to cause a scene and tries to fist fight my little brother. Campus police get involved and when dad is questioned, he informs him that my brother doesn't respect him because, because of me. Father is escorted off campus and eventually banned. We hear nothing from him again for another couple of years. Then he shows up, demands visitation with my siblings, which the court still lets him have, and because I, I am over 18 years old, I didn't have to see him. I was already at a friend's house, so my mom told him she, she called me. He said don't bother. He took the other three to see our grandparents. In the midst of berating my three siblings and talking smack about my mother and I, my little sister stands up to him. Support is given by the other two with her, and dad returns them to my mother saying, I have poisoned them against him. 
I eventually reach 22 years old. We are called and told his mother is dying. All of us attend. We say goodbye, pay our respects at the funeral, and return to our schooling, lives, and jobs. I get married. I don't even get a card from him. Both sisters graduate college. He never showed up to any one of their ceremonies. Little brother eventually graduates high school as well. Not even a phone call. Last week, he sends three out of the four of us a Facebook message. None of us have blocked him, but we haven't added him either. My brother received a message saying, You know, daddy loves you, and his life has been really hard. I've tried to always be there for you and do what is best. Your mother always stopped me. She and your older sister hate me. Please talk to me so I can tell you how my life has been. A sister received something similar in phrasing. Neither messaged, asked about their lives. In my message, he says he has stayed away because of me and my request that even though I have deprived him of interaction with my siblings, he, he, he still loves me and wants to tell me about his life. He goes on to remind me that the family was broken up because of me. My marriage is briefly mentioned as, oh yeah, you got married. My life is terrible. You need to message me so I can tell you about it. Kind of way. When we eventually informed our mother about this, she told me she got a call from the state where my dad lived, but didn't answer because she wasn't home. She hadn't called him back. Because in honesty, she did not know that that number was his. And didn't think about it being from him till we told her. She listened to the message that he had left. It was kind of weird though, to be honest. Can we really call it a message? I wouldn't. I don't think any of us can call it a message. Turns out, in the message, he just breathed into the phone for a bit before saying her name, my name and my siblings' names. Then more breathing till the machine cut him short. All of us agreed. We didn't want to deal with his creepiness anymore. So dad, let's not meet again. Threatened by an estranged family member. This happened a few years ago when I was about 16 or 17 years old. I came home from school and had the house to myself since my parents didn't get off work until later. I was sitting on my couch watching TV when I hear a knock at the glass sliding door that leads to my backyard. This makes me jump since my backyard is pretty secluded from the street and no one ever knocks on that door. I go into the hallway and peek around the corner to see who it was and saw a scraggly looking man in his 40s or 50s standing on my back porch. He clearly saw me looking, so I figured I might as well go approach the door. Looking back, I would have cracked a window or something and talked to him through there if I was smart, but I was so nervous. I, I wasn't thinking straight. So I get to the door and slide it open a crack. The man explains to me that he is my father's cousin and needs some help avoiding eye contact, and looking around nervously the whole time. After he told me who he was, I vaguely remembered seeing him at some family functions or something like that when I was younger, but my parents had always told me, they had always told me to keep away from him for some reason. Without saying much, he hands me a note to give to my dad and tells me not to tell anyone else or else before running off. I watch him out the window as he ran up my street and disappeared, the whole time looking like he was running or hiding from someone or something. At that moment, I was too scared to open the note, so I just left it in the kitchen and, and explained to my dad what had happened when he had finally got home. I later found out that the note was asking my dad to hook this guy up with some Hell's Angels to take care of some business for him. My dad used to ride a Harley, but was never in like a biker gang or anything like that. Eventually, it came out that he was trying to get the chief of police assassinated. My dad called the guy and kindly told him to fuck off and to stay away from my house and to never come by again. A few years later, the guy was arrested for holding his family hostage at gunpoint. I haven't heard much about him since, but I really hope I, I never see him again.